Let's look at section 6.3. In this section, we are going to talk about the least common denominators. Now, the idea is anytime you are trying to add or subtract rational expressions, you require a least common denominator. Without that, you cannot add or subtract them. So, uh, just like we did with fractions, that's the same concept we are going to apply here. Let's go ahead and see um, the process of finding the least common denominator. Now, of course, the first thing you will do is factor each denominator into prime factors. Now, when we say prime factors, basically you want to break it down as far as you can, uh, just like you did, uh, you know, breaking down numbers into their prime uh, factors. So, same idea here. After you do that, you will go ahead and list each uh, different denominator factor the greatest number of times it appears in any denominator. So the idea is if it appears uh, twice uh, in one denominator but three times in the other, then you go ahead and write it, uh, you know, three times since that's the greatest number it appears. If you have, you know, uh, especially with variables, you want to keep this in mind list the uh, different denominator factors the greatest number of times they appear. Uh, and of course, the last step would be to multiply all the denominator factors uh, that you found in step two to find your least common denominator. So keeping these uh, steps in mind, let's look at some uh, simple example first, and then we'll go ahead and look at some others after that. We'll start with 4 over 25m to the third and negative 9, 10m to the fourth. Now we're not trying to add or subtract fact, uh, expressions here. All we're trying to do is find the least common denominator. So the first thing we will do is factor both our denominators here and see what we come up with. Now again remember you want to factor it into its prime factors so 25 would be 5 times 5 and then of course you have m to the third power you look at 10 m to the fourth write that down into its prime factor so 10 will be 2 times 5 and you have m to the fourth as your uh, variable term. Now your second step is to go ahead and list all the factors the greatest number of times that they uh, appear. So you can see that we have um, two fives in our first denominator and one five in our second denominator. So when you're trying to find your least common denominator, Okay, you will go ahead and write the 5 two times since it appears twice here. You also had a 2 which appears just once in our uh, second denominator so go ahead and write that down as well. And you also have m to the third and m to the fourth. Now both our denominators have m in them so you go ahead and see which one appears the greatest number of times or in terms of variables, which one has the highest power, you will go ahead and write that term down as part of your LCD. And then, of course, uh, once you multiply all these factors together, you will find what your least common denominator should be. And this will give you 50 m to the fourth as your least common denominator. As you can see, uh, 25 times 2, 50, or 10 times 5 will also give you 50 as your least common denominator. So again, we started out with taking each denominator and breaking it down into its prime factors, okay? Then, when you're trying to find your uh, least common denominator, you list all the different uh, factors the greatest number of times. So we had 5 as one of our factors. Uh, since it appears twice in our first denominator, we go ahead and write it twice. Uh, you had 2, which appears just once, so you go ahead and write that down. And then uh, out of the variables, you choose which one has the highest power, and you go ahead and write that down. And once you multiply it all together, you will get your least common denominator. Okay?
Let's try and do the same thing for this next example here. Go ahead and factor each of the denominators. So 3, of course, is a prime factor by itself, so you don't need to break that down. R to the 4th, S to the 5th. Your next denominator is 9. R to the 6th, S to the 8th. 9, you can write that down as 3 times 3, r to the 6th, and s to the 8th. So when you're working on your least common denominator, again, you have 3 as uh, a factor, and you can see it appears twice in the second denominator, so you want to go ahead and write that down twice. Um, none of the other numbers, you, you know, you've covered everything. Now look at the variables. You have r to the fourth and r to the sixth. Go with the higher exponent, so r to the sixth, and then s to the fifth, s to the eighth. Of course, we will go with s to the eighth, and once you multiply all of these um, factors together, you should end up with 9 r to the sixth, s to the eighth as your least common denominator, which is the same value as your second denominator that you started out here, okay? So just your greatest denominator in this case uh, happens to be your least common denominator as well, okay? So these two were uh, fairly easy examples. Let's look at a different type of example here when you're trying to find the least common denominator. This example has three different rational expressions. Now, just like we did earlier, go ahead and factor each one of your denominators completely. So, let's see what these factors will be. r squared plus 7r, when you factor that, you will see that r is common between the two terms. Pull the r outside as your greatest common factor. Now since you had r squared, you took one of the r's outside, you're left with just one r. And then 7 from the other term, so r times r plus 7. Do the same thing for the second denominator, 5r plus 35. Again, you will see there's 5 common between these two terms. You will pull that outside as your greatest common factor. And you're left with r plus 7 because 35 divided by 5 will give you 7. Okay. Now the last denominator here is a trinomial r squared plus 4r, uh, 14r plus 49. So when you factor these, this will factor out into two binomial terms. Again, your leading coefficient is 1. Uh, so your first term here will be r uh, and r. Your last term here is 49. Your middle term's coefficient is 14. So factors of 49, which will add to give you 14, will be, of course, 7 and 7. When you multiply 7 and 7 together, you get 49. And when you add them, you get 14. So once you factor each one of your denominators, now when you are trying to find what your least common denominator should be, look at all the different factors. Now we have a single r here, and you don't have uh, a single r in any of the other terms. You want to go ahead and write that down. You have a 5, which is also just uh, that one 5, so you'll go ahead and write that down once. Now, all three of our denominators have r plus 7 common between them, but the last denominator has r plus 7 uh, written twice, so you will go ahead and write that two times ag uh, again. And remember, you have to write it the greatest number of times. So since r plus 7 is uh, written twice in this denominator, for your LCD you do the same thing. Once you multiply all of these terms together, you should end up with 5 times r times r plus 7 to the second power. Okay. 5r times the quantity r plus 7 to the second power will be the LCD or the least common denominator for these three 
denominators here. Okay?